I think the shaking is shaking the world systems in order for the kingdom perspective to come through. And and I think the shaking right now is actually allowing, uh, I believe, a real reset and also yeah. reformation of, of, of how we do business, how we do government, how we do leadership in general. And particularly, I think it's for many of us who are believers, I think God is believing more in you than actually you see in yourself right now. I'm here with Steve Chua and Steve, you have been helping so many people. And one of the things I love about you is that you have a kingdom global world perspective, not just a Christian global world perspective, but you're looking at what Jesus wants to build in our season. And I love that you went on the journey with Ed Silvoso and who's one of the fathers of the faith in our generation who looks at things uh, in the lens of transformation. What does God want to transform and build and rebuild? And you guys have been helping marketplace leaders do this for a long time. I just wanted to bring that up. But I wanted to start our, our conversation by saying, hello, big time. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> it's so good to see you. <laughs> I really wanted to start it from a place where we look at the big the big picture because interest rates, crazy right now. They, we might have another push up. Some people are mm -hmm. predicting maybe one more push. We have the debt ceiling issue that's going on right now where the government could shut down at any minute, which it won't. But, you know, we see that. I mean, that could be catastrophic. We have, you know, the the local business loan rate is so high. I, was, I think someone just told me they tried to get a loan with great credit. It was like 9 to 12%. Wow, yeah. And then someone else was getting a HELOC for 9 to 12%. And I was like, what is happening? So even to start a business or to have capital or to work on some of the things that were easy three or four years ago when interest rates were like zero. They were like, you know, 2%, zero. Like, what is your advice or what do you see God doing in the midst of with Christians in the midst of this is a turbulent time? <laughs> you know, I think you're hitting one of the big three, you know, you talk about the financial crisis that we're, we're coming into, but then we're dealing with labor issues. It's mm -hmm. hard to find the right, right staffing. Plus you've got all the quiet quitting stuff that's going on. People aren't uh, reacting in the labor force as they used to. And then you've got all the supply chain stuff. So you're, you're, all these things are kind of one, what perfect storm, if you like, that's yeah. coming in. And, 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 and from the world's perspective, it, it's, it's a nightmare, okay? It's crisis. And, and I love the word crisis because I think there's a Chinese word for crisis that has two kind of symbols. The first symbol means danger, but the second symbol means opportunity. Oh, and as kingdom cool. people, we need opportunities because I think the shaking is shaking the world systems in order for the kingdom perspective to come through. And, and I think the shaking right now is actually allowing – I believe a real reset and also yeah. reformation of, of, of how we do business, how we do government, how we do leadership in general. And particularly, I think it's for many of us who are believers, I think God is believing more in you than actually you see in yourself right now. And there's an upgrade that he wants to establish. And if you're shaking right now, it's not because things are bad. It's because he needs to shake things off so that you can see the better that's before you. See, I think this is good because I, I look at like news media and how whether you're on this political side or this political side, and you're going on a certain narrative and then they're using everything like financial crisis. See, it's awful. Biden's terrible or Trump's awful or whatever. And they're using whatever crisis or catastrophe is going on to prove their narrative. Then you look at like anti eschatological people. And a lot of them are more conspiracy based. and They're looking at like everything in the lens. AI is evil. It's good. The one world order, whatever. Blah. Right. But if you have a kingdom lens like you do, you're looking at everything and you're going, see, there's a shaking. God's doing something. God's up to something. He's positioning people. And so everything you're seeing, it seems to tend to lend back to that narrative. And I feel like not enough people have that biblical kingdom, Christian worldview that you have. So I feel like it's hard sometimes when people are trying to filter or discern information. So what would you say to somebody who's trying to discern information? Where do they start with a real kind of getting this biblical concept down to this Christian view that you have? Well, I think it's 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 simply going back to the cross, Sean. Uh, what, what did the cross accomplish? It, it it reestablishes relationship. It redeems. It restores. It reconciles. It revives and it reforms. Love that. Everything that comes in. If we if we can see the world through the eyes of that, then we we don't lose hope. We actually see that the cross actually is here to see the fulfillment of the Great Commission, which isn't the disciple of people; it's a disciple of nations. Okay, and so when the, 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 I often say your finishing point is really, really important. So if your finishing point is just souls, then all we do is build big local churches and mega churches. Okay, mm. but the Great Commission actually says to make disciples 
of nations, baptizing them, the nations, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Baptizing means to saturate, to saturate them with the fullness of God, and so that um, so that you will begin to, and to teach the, them, the nations, to do everything I've taught you to do. Mm-hmm. And so the, the the finishing line isn't the transformation of individuals, although that's important. It's to see our cities, our nations, uh, the world transformed. And and that's why the cro- that's why I think the cross is so amazing yeah. because that we can redeem things, restore things, reconcile things. It's the answer to all the things that we're seeing that the media are saying is a problem, but actually we come with the solution. It's so funny because I, I on my like news program, my news app on my phone, I look at this one uh, flipboard that's called Medical Breakthroughs Every Day, mm-hmm. and almost every day I look at it, and it's like I'll hear something about diabetes in mainstream news, and then I look at that and I'm like. They're saying like all the diabetes experts are saying we're, they're going to heal in our generation. Like in one generation, it'll be gone, completely yeah. gone. And you look at like the mainstream that was like, it's going to get worse. It's everyone's dying. Everyone has diabetes. You know, like you hear that. And I love your perspective because there's something about where you look. And when you when you have the cross in view at all times and, you know, Jesus is going to come back for a great reward. It brings a different kind of peace when you when you hear these statistics. Now you're also, I mean, you're consulting business leaders, not just church leaders, because you sound like a pastor because you've been a pastor for so long. But you also cross over in an instant second into helping business leaders like really maximize their potential, like go on a journey of like a, a real growth. Like you help to kind of amplify or multiply what they're doing. But a lot of this goes back to how you train because of your Christian foundation. How do you do that? Like, how does that work for you? I mean, it's, it's actually really fun because, you know, I believe as the ecclesia or the church, we're to go to the gates of hell, whereas as a lot of the time we're the church, where the hell, well, yeah, hell is coming to us, all right? It's yeah. almost the opposite. Yeah. And so when you have a perspective of, of what I was sharing about the cross, you actually have no fear going into the gates of hell. And mm. it's fun because you're bringing heaven to earth. Okay, and so what would heaven look like if it invades your your marriage, your family, your your sphere of influence, your business, or whatever it might be? But a lot of the issues are just learning how to translate, like 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 your book, translate God. It's translating God where people who don't know, who have never been brought up with Christianese, okay, or charismatic language or whatever, and take those simple principles and explain it to them in ways that they can hear. Like, for example, you know, you can take the word forgiveness, which, you know, the world kind of knows, but you can just simply say it means, what does it mean to let go? Okay. Yeah. And, and people just say, oh, I understand that, you know, and, and it's so much fun to be able to translate the Bible to them in, in, in human terms, if you like, in, uh, yeah. and so that they can grasp it and that they think it makes total sense once you take away some of the religious language that's attached to it. And so yeah. a lot of what I do is bringing those same principles, but just taking the Bible verses and everything out. But I know where I'm coming from, from my heart, and then just explaining those principles. And just it's so much fun to see how God works there, transforming individuals and companies, and, and especially those who don't even know him. Okay, he, he just yeah. loves the world. He loves the world. And, and we have to love the world as he loves the world. I think so much of this is part of your deep relationship to the Holy Spirit and being led by him, which I, I'm so respectful. I've known you for years and I've sent people to you. I've sent very successful business leaders to you that were in crisis and their marriages and their families and their business. And I watched you just get led by God. They could hire a Fortune 100 business coach who could help them with the mechanics of their structure. But what they really needed is somebody to help them with the holistic picture of their identity. And I've watched you and even your wife, Barbara, get involved. And it's been so encouraging to me because there is a place to go. And you guys have set yourselves apart to do things just like this, both with people who know the Lord and people who don't know the Lord. And I've seen the changes in people, which is one of the reasons why I want to interview you today, because I feel like you have so much hope. And I also know you have a new book coming out. I want to talk to you about this book because there's all kinds of books coming out. There's all kinds of great books in the business world. There's all kinds, But there's something about like, I always think like if everyone can have a Steve Chua in their life for a little bit. It can, it can kind of cause you to go forward and get over some humps or get, get out of stuck places. And now you have a book that can, like, we can have you in our pocket. So tell us about the book. Well, I, I'm really excited. People say, how long did it take you to write the book? And I said, probably 50 years. Oh. Okay. <laughs> because I, the book is really on identity. And identity has yeah. been this buzzword. But what I've realized is nobody really unpacks it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and And what I've come to realize is if you don't know who you are, then you spend the rest of your life, your destiny, trying to find out who you are. Yeah. And this book has been based actually on my own journey uh, of discovering 
uh, how to live from identity rather for identity, how to uh, to live uh, knowing my identity rather than trying to find it, and the, it, it 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 changes everything because either the if you get it wrong you're always surviving life if you get it right you'll start thriving in life, and oh, so um, and so this book has been designed specifically through uh, my own personal transformation but also helping so many go through an identity encounter if you like, where they suddenly realize that what they believe about themselves isn't what God believes about them. Mm. Uh, or they, or what, uh, what does it mean to be created in the image and likeness of God? We all know it theologically, but if you actually think about it in reality, that's actually a pretty amazing statement. All right. And so we're actually supposed to live gloriously where most of us are living kind of uh, beaten up in shame and yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so this book has been designed to help people break through. To uh, th- Every chapter, there's what I call an identity activation, which will take you on a journey of, of self-discovery and God discovery, and to realize not only does God love you, but he wants you to love yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, and how, and not only does he accept you, he actually needs you to accept yourself in order to align with the fullness of what he created for you. I mean, if you- I, I love one of the things I love about it, because I read it already. And I, one of the things I love about your personal story with your own father and just how you had to grow through some identity stuff there and just like relate to him differently because of what God, the journey God took you on. But a lot of times when people talk about identity or some of these principles, you think of like a really feminine women's conference where they're talking about Esther or something. You don't think of like a grown man who's a business consultant. You don't think about the fortune 500 company leader, you don't think about the farmer, you think about like, it, it's become a very almost feminized term, or it's become a term that's negative about false identities. But you don't think about real identity. I love the book because it takes people on a deep dive and really helps to mature the theme and season the theme of identity. So it's not a been there done that book. It really mm-hmm. is like, a, it's a fresh take on something that has become a buzzword. So I'm so glad you've written this. I'm so glad you have this out. And um, how can people get the book? I know it's coming out right now. Well, uh, it's supposed to be launched June the 1st. So yeah. uh, uh, the whole, uh, you can get it on Amazon. Okay. And we're really excited because uh, it'll be in Kindle. It'll be paperback, hardback, however you want it. Uh, and if you like it, please leave a review on it because we just want Absolutely. to get the message out of how much God loves them and wants to transform who they are in order for their lives to thrive. Can I double review it? I can leave it a review on Amazon. Even though I ah, oh, Sean, that would be that would be awesome, Sean. You know, <laughs> I, lo- I would love that. So if, well, if you, if, yeah, I was going to say, if you're battling shame, insecurity, emotional dysfunction, or relationship breakdowns, which is a cycle, okay, this book's for you. All right, and it will really transform your life so that you can transform the world. That's so good. And then, how do people get a hold of your services that they want? to hire a consultant right now. Okay, if you want to, you can get me, if you're looking for coaching, you can get me on my w- website at stevechoirintl.com. Uh, but I also have a business uh, coaching company of 15 amazing coaches that have been uh, kingdom coaches, but designed to infiltrate the marketplace. Uh, yeah. And you can go to insightoutcorp.com, all right? And the company's called Insight Out. Uh, in order to give you insight to change you from the inside out. So that's kind of the way it's been worked. That's it. When I saw that name the first time, I was just like, yes, that's perfect. Well, for those of you who uh, aren't going to engage that way, I want to encourage you to engage by Steve Chua is going to be doing a class with us in the month of June on our Spiritual Growth Academy. So you could join Steve there as well. There's uh, pre-recorded sessions as well as live sessions where you could ask your questions. And Steve's going to be praying for impartation and answering questions in a really profound way. That's one of his gifts is to be able to be an asset to people. And I just think you're a natural mentor, one of the most natural I've ever met. So thank you, Steve, so much for being here today. And I just so believe in your book. I so believe in your materials, but I also know it's because you believe in people so well, it's hard not to believe in you. So thanks for being here. Thank you, Sean. It's an absolute joy.